And we're continuing with coverage of President-elect Trump's picks to head the intelligence community and the Pentagon. They are set to face some tough questions from senators when Trump nominates them after taking office next year. We're bringing on Mike Leon to talk about this. He's an NTD News contributor as well as the Policy and Strategy Director at the Free and Equal Elections Foundation. He's also the host of the Can We Please Talk podcast. Mike, great to have you back on the show. Let's talk about Trump's pick to head the intelligence community to be the Director of National Intelligence, Tulsi Gabbard. She is someone who's spoken with a, a, a Syrian leader, Syrian leader Ashad al-Bashar, Assad al-Bashar. Is she, is she someone that they're going to really be questioning about that specific instance in which she met with someone who leads a nation hostile to the United States? Hey, Kevin, good to see you first and foremost. Long time no see, buddy. Um, you've been doing great work, by the way. So, yeah, you know, Tulsi Gabbard, this is a very critical department for people that don't know what the director of national intelligence does. DNI was formed after 9-11 happened, and it, it was formed for somebody to be able to capture all of the intelligence that all of our agencies are doing and talking to each other. So that way that report can be given to the president of the United States. So it's a very critical position. Obviously, James Clapper was, was a former DNI under a couple of administrations. And so this role is integral in terms of finding out how the agencies that have people that are on the ground doing reconnaissance work, et cetera, et cetera, all talk to each other and share information so we avoid catastrophes like what happened on 9-11. In terms of Tulsi Gabbard, I was speaking with somebody who served with her recently for one of my episodes on Can We Please Talk? And he was like, look, I, I like Tulsi Gabbard. I served with her, but she's never handled intelligence. And so for somebody to oversee the, the central role that handles our intelligence of all of the agencies and communicates that to the president is very tough for me to understand why she would be nominated to this. You know, veteran affairs makes more sense for her. Army medic served, you know, it, you know, and knows the issues that veterans return home with. So I think, you know, for this, they're going to be hammering her on like what you mentioned on that meeting, but also they're going to be hammering her. I know other senators have been very vocal. Tammy Duckworth has said some things about that she could be compromised. I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't go that far, but she's going to be hammered on some of the things that she has said about Syria, about Russia that are really not in the best interest of the United States. And Senator Mark Wayne Mullen, he says that Gabbard could easily pass a background check, something that these senators are saying they need to see because she serves in the Army Reserves currently. Now, you could comment on that or what are, you know, critics have been saying that Gabbard is saying these things are sympathetic to Russia surrounding its invasion of Ukraine. I haven't actually seen any of those statements yet. It's just reported. What's your comment there, Mike? Yeah, no, and I kind of agree with you, too. You know, not I haven't done the true deep dive into Tulsi Gabbard and some of her past statements. Obviously, I'd have to go back and, and see where she has said those sympathetic things, or at least what people think are sympathetic. But, you know, the ba FBI background checks, these financial disclosure statements, all these things that have to be done as part of this confirmation process that the Senate committee will ultimately look at are some of the things that Tulsi Gabbard is, you know, going to have to, you know, at least show up and, and give some of this information about. But I also think that, you know, uh, the real reason why some people have this trepidation and specifically more on the Pete Hesgeff side because of some of the legal issues that he has, but more with the Tulsi Gabbard stuff is because, again, it's not about whether or not Tulsi Gabbard is qualified. She obviously, you know, served previously in Congress. She's obviously served this country. It's more about the position itself. And it's really responsible for our national intelligence. And somebody who has never done that type of work, leading the agency responsible for doing that work is something that I think is going to be hammered home, even more so with the talking points that, that you were talking about before, some of the senators saying that she has met with some leaders and she's been sympathetic to, to Russia's you know, involvement in Ukraine, et cetera. Well, Mike, I'm sure the senators are going to consider all those points that you mentioned. And keep in mind, Trump can only afford to lose three senators, their votes, in this confirmation process because J.D. Vance, as the vice president, can cast a tie-breaking vote, given that they have a 53 majority. Now, let's talk about Pete Hegseth. He's a former U.S. Army major in the Minnesota Army National Guard. He served in you know, Iraq and Afghanistan. He's been selected to head the Department of Defense. This is the world's foremost military. Do you think that that 2017 report with allegations of sexual assault, no charges, and he denies the allegations, but do you think that's going to cause a roadblock to his confirmation? 
Yeah, I think that amongst other things, look, uh, this is a little bit personal for me, uh, Kevin, because, you know, I, I started my career working at Fox News. I, I worked as a weekend PA and uh, on Fox and Friends. Uh, I happen to know Pete Hesgeff. I happen to know a lot of people that still work at Fox and Friends, speaking with different people, not only that work for the Department of Defense, but people that know Pete. Pete, Pete is not qualified for this role. And I'm not saying that to discount, discount his service to this country because we thank him for that. It was, you know, decades of service. I know he's written books. I know he's done stuff for veterans returning home. That's not the issue. Again, the issue is putting somebody who currently is not doing any of this work in charge of the agency responsible for keeping us safe, the largest military in the world. There's, you know, so millions of people that work for the Department of Defense and for the Pentagon. And so, and I'm, I'm, I'm laughing a little bit because that's kind of the, the emotion. It's not meant to be humor. It's meant to be, we need to put somebody that is a serious person in this position. So I think senators are going to look at, you know, not only his background and what you mentioned about the 2017 allegations, but they're going to look at, he's never managed a department bigger than 40 to 45 people at a nonprofit. Now he has to manage 1.9 million people. That is way too many people as an increase. You know, Secretary of State, for example, Marco Rubio makes sense. Marco Rubio is on a foreign intelligence committee. Marco Rubio has met with dignitaries. He's a natural transition to be Secretary of State. He will get confirmed very easily. Those are the type of roles we should be looking at for this cabinet that President Trump should be looking at. P. Hesgeff is not one of those. Well, thank you for sharing your insights with us. Mike Leon, our contributor and the Policy and Strategy Director at the Free and Equal Elections Foundation. Thanks for having me, Kev.